There is some gripping evidence that shows much of the world is going down the wrong energy path. That is one of the reasons CEO John Sheridan took on the challenge to lead Burnaby-based Ballard Power Systems, which is a top-notch marketer of clean energy and fuel cell products. Sheridan has degrees in environmental studies, business and economics, as well as an impressive corporate resume, which are some of the reasons Ballard called on him in 2006 to run the company. It is my pleasure to welcome John Sheridan to Studio 4 to tell us more. Nice to meet you. It's great to meet you, Fanny. So before uh, you joined Ballard, uh, you had been in business and you'd taken degrees in economics, etc. What did you know about clean energy? Frankly, I didn't know too much. Uh, I think we all get caught up in our busy worlds and we take for granted the energy systems we have. But you know, when you really stop and think about it, it's, it's one of the biggest problems we've got facing the world today. Our dependence on old electrical grids, our addiction to fossil fuels, the environmental calamities that creates, it's a pressing need. So for me, I was involved in many businesses, including media, telecommunications, and I had an opportunity to switch gears mm -hmm. and get into something that I thought would be really compelling, clean energy. And you did chair the board, did you not, or you were on the board of Ballard before they put you in the upper chair? Right. When I was president of Bell Canada, I used to get asked to go on a number of boards. Frankly, I didn't have the time, I didn't have the interest. But when I was approached by Ballard, and I think that started to awaken my interest in clean energy, mm -hmm. I was a part-time director or an independent director of the board, and I went from there to become CEO. Simple question, what is a fuel cell? Simple question, but good question, and you're the chemist in the group with your background. <laughs> well, I wasn't so good in organic chemistry, but I do have a degree. <laughs> so maybe the best way to explain it is to think of what a fuel cell isn't. Okay. So if you think about a, a gasoline engine or a diesel generator, it produces power by combustion. Internal it explodes, combustion. It explodes, it burns, it creates mm -hmm. emissions. Fuel cell is more like a solid state generator. Power is produced in a solid state uh, device through a chemical reaction. The other thing people get confused with with fuel cells is batteries. Now batteries don't generate power, they just store it. And the storage and the amount of power gets drawn down, they've got to be recharged, they're not environmentally friendly. So think of a fuel cell as somewhere in between. It's solid state mm -hmm. like a battery, but instead of storing energy, it generates energy. And it does so with hydrogen as a fuel. The only emission is water vapor, so clean electricity. And the hydrogen comes from only water because, as you know, hydrogen can be compressed from a fossil fuel. It can come from other sources. Right. It can come from a number of sources, as you say, including hydrocarbon or fossil Coal. fuels. But the, the ultimate clean energy solution mm. is producing hydrogen from water. Run electricity through water, electrolysis, hydrogen is produced. Who invented it? Uh, actually, fuel cells go back over a hundred years. It's mm. an old technology. It's been a promising technology for decades and decades and decades. The challenge has been, how do you convert the technology into products? How do you lower the cost of those products? How do you work with customers to get those products out where they're relevant in today's world? Sure, and that's your job. That's my <laughs> job, working with a lot of smart people. Mm -hmm. But there's lots of hype around it, as you know, and there's lots of hope around it, and uh, who wouldn't want to be green technologically if it keeps us warm and uh, uh, driving around and enjoying life? Absolutely. And you know, it, it's, it's interesting too, people tend to be more aware of the need for clean energy when gasoline prices go up or things mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. But there's just so many vivid reminders in our daily life of the problems with the existing energy paradigms. Look at the, uh, the oil disaster in the Gulf of Mexico. Mm -hmm. Look at the nuclear disaster in, in Japan. Mm -hmm. There's very worrying, compelling evidence out there. We've got to change the whole energy paradigm. Uh, any similarity to what goes on in a nuclear energy plant to what would go on in a hydrogen cell, or is that a totally different technology? Totally different, no comparison whatsoever. Mm -hmm. You know, it's interesting too, when I, I was younger, mm -hmm. many, many, many years ago in university and environmental studies, in visiting nuclear plants then, wonderful technology, a relatively clean energy technology, but one of the problems back then was what do you do with these spent bundles of fuel? And that was one of the challenges mm -hmm. with the disaster in Japan. 
decades later, that's still a big challenge with nuclear energy. Not a challenge with hydrogen energy. Not at all. It's safe. It's, it's inert. It's clean. Mm -hmm. As you know, problems. they say the last battles will be fought over water. Uh, I'm sure we will have enough water left over to drink and... Uh, I hope so. <laughs> let's hope. And, and run a fuel cell. How much does it take? Like, say you want to run a bus on fuel cells. Right. So good question. And again, to put it into perspective, right here in Vancouver, there was an announcement yesterday by the Premier. There's going to be a new facility in, in North Van that's going to produce about 1,200 kilograms of clean hydrogen a day. That 1,200 kilograms is enough to power about 50 buses. Really? Now, I know during the Olympics they had uh, hydrogen, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, called a hydrogen bus, called a hydrogen-powered yep. bus? Sure. We, uh, we actually introduced a fleet of 20 hydrogen fuel cell-powered buses in Whistler which was a great mm -hmm. challenge and a real tough challenge because if you think of one of the toughest places is for buses to operate, think of the mountains in Whistler, think of the winter temperatures, mm -hmm. warm in the summer, long grades, and we also did it under the international profile of the media around the Olympics, and we did it well. Uh, are they as fast as a diesel bus, uh, go up hills as quickly, certainly cleaner? Or are they cleaner than a diesel bus? Oh, absolutely. Dramatically cleaner, no emissions again. And uh, what people notice quite often when they ride the bus, it's quiet. Mm. And How? it's interesting, too, uh, as we think of other applications for fuel cells, and one of our big applications is backup power systems for wireless networks. So today, sometimes the existing technology employs diesel generators. Mm -hmm. Not only do they have harmful emissions, diesel generators are loud versus we could put a fuel cell on the roof of your building, you'd never hear it, you'd never see it. Quiet, solid state, mm. zero emissions. Do you see a day when people will have uh, fuel cell generators in their homes? Uh, earthquake hits, uh, power goes out, traditional power goes out, you have the fuel cell generator in the basement, you can still cook your uh, dinner? Right. One of the things, so the answer is yes. Okay. One, the broader answer, though, is is we're somewhere in between at Ballard, the tremendous promise, the vision, and the longer-term potential of the technology, and where we are today and what we're doing week by week, month by month. So will that uh, technology, will that product be there for your home mm -hmm. next week? No. no. Are we working on it? Actually, we are. Mm -hmm. We bought a company in Denmark last year, and that's one of the products they're working on. It's called Micro Combined Heat and Power, a unit that can go in your home, can be fed by natural gas fuel and produces both electricity, clean electricity, and heat for your home. Really? Uh, back to the Olympics one more time. I know that uh, the Olympic rings, when they were lit up, uh, had a backup generator, or I read. Fuel cell. A fuel cell. See, I'm trying to figure out what's a fuel cell, what's a generator, how does it all work? Right. Backup fuel cell in case there was a disaster. Well, no, better than, better than that. So we actually used a fuel cell generator to actually power the ring. So it was the power source. It was the right. source. So when I was talking back up a few minutes ago, that, that's more of an insurance policy for wireless networks. So okay. most wireless networks depend on base stations. The electronics are powered by grid electricity. If that electricity stops, if the grid goes down, then the fuel cell is there for backup power. But it can also be provided for continuous power like the rings. Mm -hmm. Let's take a break and we'll come back and talk about hydrogen highway and how far away we are from driving a hydrogen car, perhaps. Absolutely. Okay. John Sheridan, our guest, he is the CEO of Ballard Power Systems.